forever. <laughs> and I remember his acting was so bad in that movie. I go, that guy was terrible. He's never going to be in anything ever again. And then he became one of the biggest stars. Mark Wahlberg is one of the biggest stars. And actually, I want to hang out with him. Hello, sir. Hello, ma'am. And welcome to the Scott and Allie Not For Air podcast. Uh, everything going well today? Yes, I am now in my horror movie era. Yeah. I wore my horror movies and chill sweatshirt today. So that <laughs> gives me a full, uh, full season of watching horror movies. There's one I did not watch last season that I, I try to reserve them for this time of year. Yeah. Uh, Barbarian. Have you seen it? No. Came out, I think, last year. And I even saw another recommendation on social this morning, just, you know, flipping through. And this is how I wake up. Excuse me. I wake up to horror movie recommendations in the morning. Sorry, for those of you just listening to the Not For Air podcast, my chair seemed to have lost some strength and I just dipped about an inch. So I had to rearrange oh, there. I didn't even notice. I wasn't even oh, looking. You didn't? Not, if you're watching it, my eyes got real big. I'm like, what just happened? Oh, I just dip, dip right down. But Man. you're wearing the sweatshirt that uh, it really kicked it off today. Can you show that off at all? Is there yeah. anything that you can... More movies and chill. And then yeah. it says, what's your favorite scary movie? Which <laughs> is, uh, that's a nod to Scream, which yep. is one of my favorite scary movies. I got to go back and watch it. I remember <gasps> so many iconic parts like the garage door yes. and things like that. But I forget... I forget a lot of that movie. You know, the original Scream movie is not a new movie at all. I no. mean, that's old. It was from the 90s. And, oh, 90s? I saw it in theaters. I remember that. I think it was from the 90s. I'll it was. To, it was. It I want to say 96. You want to Google it? Here. Yeah. You, uh, I'll, you want me to do it or do you want to do it? Oh, here. I'll just, I'll do it on my phone. Okay. I think 96. And I remember seeing it in theaters. Who did you see it with? Oh, gosh. I don't remember now. We did a lot of movie premieres at the radio station I worked at in Cleveland. Like, I will never forget Men in Black was a Jammin' 92.3 movie premiere. That was awesome to see. Did you see that at the movie, Midnight Movie showing? No, no. It was an actual premiere. Like, the movie companies in cities the size of Cleveland and stuff will, well, they used to. I don't know if they still do. But they will do actual premieres where the radio station is like, here, we're giving you a theater, give away tickets, pack it, because then it would spread the word of the movie. I'm trying to think of some of the other ones that I I've seen. I remember Lost in Space, the one with uh, Joey from Friends. Remember that version of that movie? Oh, yes. That yeah. was one of the premieres we did. We did uh, Men in Black. I remember that. We also did, I remember the Western that Will Smith did. Um, the Wild Wild West. That oh, was another one. Worst movie ever. Uh, did you oh, only you know, see Did you only see Will Smith movies? No, movie no. I will give you a great movie. And I called it so wrong. Okay. Okay. Remember the movie Fear? It was oh. the first movie that... Um, Reese Witherspoon? Oh, Reese Witherspoon, but no, it was the first movie of... Uh, oh, God, why am I drawing a blank? He's Not been in... Ethan Hawke? No, 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 no. Um, oh, my God, he had the w Wally Burgers. Um, oh, Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg. Allie, I am not even joking. I could not... If I would have put money on this, I would be... I would have five part-time jobs in order to pay off my debt on top of my full-time job. I remember walking in that movie, and I remember it was laughable. There was a scene where he goes, forever. <laughs> and I remember his acting was so bad in that movie. I go, that guy was terrible. He's never going to be in anything ever again. And then he became one of the biggest stars. Mark Wahlberg is one of the biggest stars. And actually, I want to hang out with him. I don't want to get up at four in the morning and, and eat uh, a full rotisserie chicken with him like he does every day. If he still does that, that diet he was on to stay mm -hmm. in the shape. But I thought, I'm like, this guy's acting was forever. And wonder, it was like, oh my gosh. I wonder if he still does that or that was just for a season. Uh, no, I think he's. I think his diet... Last time he was on live with Kelly and whoever the fuck she's with this week. Um, uh, her husband. Oh, well, Mark, he'll be around right? to the end of time. Until they get rid of her, he's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I remember I, it, that he was talking about his diet and daily, and he still works out very hard every day. Mm -hmm. And he gets up at like four something in the morning, eats a rotisserie chicken. That's part of the diet. And he just goes throughout the day. That's how he's maintained the way he, his physique, which... Man, I love a rotisserie chicken, but that's a lot of effort. I can't eat rotisserie chicken every day, though. Actually, I can't eat chicken every day. When we were growing up, it was a lot of like chicken, chicken, chicken. Mm -hmm. And I just got chickened out. I just it was don't. the cheap meat. Yeah, I just don't. I don't like eating chicken 
unless honestly unless it's fried I've, I've mentioned this on the show before there's something about chicken the texture of it unless it's grilled or fried or rotisserie like a baked chicken i yeah. don't i don't care for it it's it's not for it's close to a rotisserie though it's different though oh, it's yeah, juicier but you were so right December 20th, 1996. Oh, I is, got it. Was the release date of Scream. There was others too, and I can't remember. We had uh, quite a few movies we used to do that, and it was really cool. We'd go rem- in for free, see it three nights before it would open, then, you know, for the general public. I remember winning tickets off of the radio station to go see a movie. None of the ones that you just named. I don't even remember what we saw, but I remember. Was it off my old station? Because, I mean, I knew. For those that don't know the story, when Allie was growing up, that's when I worked in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And although the timeline seems sketchy, you seem to say middle school, which makes it sound creepier. I think you were very early in high school. uh, My timeline is not off. If you do the math, I was in middle school. Mm. You were just. Awkward. It it, it was in the 90s. But I was very young. I was in my early, early 20s then. Right, right. So the timeline... This sounds like I'm justifying us dating. Well, when you were in middle school and I was in my early 20s and we were going out. Oh, speaking of this, I wanted to mention this on the show, but the age difference thing. I want... I'll bring it up now instead of on the show. So we have a producer named Jason who's only 18. He's great. Didn't we bring him in on the podcast once? Yeah, a couple podcasts ago. So I was thinking, how do about, I not remember anything we do on the show or on the podcast? I remember nothing. It all bleeds together for me sometimes. <laughs> but what I notice now is, isn't it funny how you can be working somewhere and all of a sudden you're in your 20s and you have a work friend who becomes like a friend friend who's in their like 40s or 50s. So yes. I remember working at a radio station in Columbus. I was in my 20s and one of my closest friends, also my mentor, but one of my closest friends was in his 40s. Yeah, which is weird at the time. Well, is it though? Because I was thinking about that. Jason's going to be 21 in three years. Yeah. That will put you at 50 or something. Um, would that something. be Would that be weird for you to have a drink with Jason well, and, like do, hang, and hang out with him? I do jokingly call him my son because uh, I, I just, I love his work ethic and all that stuff. And it's like one of these people you're sitting there going, boy, if there's anybody you want to make your own, yeah. you know, he's the kid. So I, I, that's where the joke has come from with uh, he's my son. So shouldn't I, his dad, take him out to uh, have his first beer? I think so. <laughs> but I don't, honestly, I don't know if he drinks. I don't know if his parents drink. I don't know if his parents, like my parents would never ever take me out for my 21st birthday drink my 21st birthday drink i'll never forget it and i think we i think we've talked about this on the show too i was in the middle of finals at school in college and so i took some finals then went out for a little bit not long at all and then me and uh i was one of the first ones to turn 21 so i think it was like me and like one or two friends went out for a drink or two and then i had to go back and to and study for my next final, which was the next morning. Wow! Right, but my mom and dad they would never take me out for my twenty first drink. I think that becomes more and more popular now for parents to go out with their kids. I, I would have done. I think okay. Here is the way I think it would have gone for me. Now, my parents, uh, I was was I living at home by the time I was twenty one. Wait a minute, hold on. I got to do. I no, I was living at home. All right, so my situation was different. So my brother Gary, uh, who's a, a bit older than I am, but when I say a bit, a couple decades almost. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, you were adopted, not were, you are adopted. Yes, yeah. So the, the big age difference really does make sense. So I think we would have done something. The funny part about it was- We as the parents or Gary? No, my brother and I, I think my dad might have, but here's where mine was different. So being the fact growing up in Buffalo, uh, first of all, as we know, New York State's a 21- plus to drink but canada which was moments across the border uh-huh. is 18 or 19 one of the two something like well that. at any rate i wanted to learn how to do a lot of different aspects of of this business and not specifically tied to this business i had done a lot of nightclub work for a long time in my younger years in nightclubs in Canada. And the reason why is it was 25 minutes from my house to get over the border. Mm-hmm. It was very easy way before like 9-11 and all that hit where 
Well, actually, the border's gotten a little bit easier again now. But oh, way yeah. back then, I mean, it was like you did not have to show all sorts of ID and stuff. It's like, you hey, just where sneezed you, across the border. Yeah, where are you from? Where are you going? I got to know a lot of the border agents because I kept going across the same bridge. I'm like, oh, I'm going to DJ at the Igloo. That was the name of the, the bar Igloo. in Canada, mind you. And it was a downstairs bar, like in a basement. So uh-huh. that was like perfect, right? And uh, so I actually could have beers and stuff and um did you I, yeah a couple throughout the course of the night like see i don't drink and work well but when you're djing you're taking a sip it's hot in the nightclub you're doing what you're doing you're at working. the time it was vinyl i was spinning vinyl i mean it's funny at the time it was vinyl and now we're back to vinyl but um yes and i'm gonna talk about that in a second too we will yeah and uh so it was different it's like it was if you were now i'm not saying that djs and nightclubs haven't gotten effed up but for me it was i i I was always focusing on doing this and moving this and Mm -hmm. and man let me tell you i it would you you sweat so you were two to three beers in the course of a five-hour shift to uh dj there was nothing in me by the time i left right right and it's the same for when i worked (laughs) at a winery i didn't even drink when i was working at the winery i would take like some sips here and there but i was working and so and plus i get real clumsy Whenever, whenever I'm drinking. So I never wanted to like drop bottles, drop glasses, anything like that. So I totally understand you not drinking when you were working at the age of 19. It, it was so limited. Fast forward. Let's go to when you were 21. Yeah. So Gary did not take you out. No, because I think they know like he's already been able to drink. Like this isn't that special. Hey, you're 21 now. We're going to take you out for your first oh. beer or something like that. Now, mind you, I didn't grow up in a house of drinkers. There was, well, first of all, there was no one in my family that had any alcohol issues whatsoever uh, in my immediate family. I think yeah. there might've been an uncle. <laughs> There's always an uncle. There's an uncle, uh, but it wasn't any blood relation or anything. Well, I guess I'm really no blood relation to anybody in my family when you think about it, but no, I never was raised like the only time I saw my parents drink would be socially in the sense they used to do this thing called club. Mm-hmm. That was their name of it. And I'll never forget. I swear I've mentioned this on another podcast or maybe on the show. Once again, I don't remember. So my all parents, together. they had the couples. They had all the couples. So they had the Geeters, the Plows, the, the Edgingtons, and the Snaps. Those That was the <laughs> core group. And they would rotate. Uh, like once a month, they would rotate where they would go as couples. All the couples would come together, the plows, the snaps, the geeters, the edgingtons, you know, all of them. Fun. And of course, my parents. And they would have like a Saturday night or a Friday night. I think it was a Saturday night. I think it was Saturday. No, uh-huh. it was fr- whatever. And it would always be, and it was back in the day, and it was so cool. You would you would think it was like a Mad Men thing. They would drink their highballs, oh, yeah. and they would uh, all sit around in the living room and all talk about stuff and this and that and have a great time. They'd play cards. There'd be a midnight snack. These, let me tell you, these people were roaring partiers. And then it would be like one something in the morning and everybody would split off and go home. That was one of the things I grew up with. But again, it was once a month. It was yeah. not, you know. But it goes and it was, back to my, my point, though, that it wasn't an event no. to... It, it wasn't an, an event like how it is now when somebody turns 21. Oh, we got to take little Scotty out for his no. 21st drink. So it wasn't like Gary was waiting for you to turn 21 because I know like with uh, I've had a couple friends that they've had siblings that it was, oh, uh, Tommy's finally 21. We're going to take Tommy out for his first drink. So what it was is me and all of my close friends, mm-hmm. it would be, oh, somebody's sibling is turning 21. Oh, we got to take them out for their first drink. So it wasn't like that. It sounds like you and Gary, Gary was already in his like adult raising kids age oh, at that point too. Oh, he had kids by the time I turned 21. Uh, my, it's it's really funny the, the way that the family separates out. So I'm the youngest of my two brothers, Gary and Jim. However, uh, Gary being the fact he's much older, my nephew Tom... I think is only like 13 years difference than me. And like Gary's 13 years difference from me up. Mm -hmm. He's like, and my nephew, his son is 13 years down. And I'm kind of, I'm the only one stuck in the age group that I am. I'm the only one. Yeah. Well, and actually I shouldn't say that my cousin, Joanne is near my age within a couple years, but for the most part, we're the only ones that are, are right there. Everybody else is much older or 13 years younger and then much younger. Which sucks because me and my brother were just talking about this the other day, how we have little 
groups, little like nucleuses Mm -hmm. within our family. So my brother always hung out with my cousin Micah because they were close in age. And then uh, my brother was saying how like, oh my gosh, Andrew was so annoying. And I said, well, Andrew was closest to my age. See, Andrew wanted to to hang out with you. He wanted to be cool like you. So he was always annoying to you where he was my age. So I hung out with Andrew, even though he was annoying sometimes. But but that's how it works. So it kind of sucks. Annoying Andy. Yeah, it kind of sucks <laughs> oh, for you. Me. That's so funny. I've never heard anyone call him Andy. He's never been. He's always been an No, Andrew. I called him Annoying Andy. I know, but <laughs> that's, it's just weird because nobody's ever called him Andy. But it sucks for you that you really never had. I always had like my cousin Melina was right above me in age. Yeah. And then my cousin Andrew was right below me. So that's who I hung out with. It kind of stinks that you didn't have that per, that that partner in crime, if you will. Yeah, there was a little bit. I mean, my, my cousin, well... My cousin Janet had passed away now a number of years ago. She was the older of the two cousins. So Janet and Joanne were bro- were were sisters. I almost said brother. Do you want to know what? I have an aunt Janet and an aunt Joanne. Oh, you're kidding? No. Oh my god, our parallels in life continue. All right. So uh, Janet had passed away. Uh, rest her soul. My she, aunt Janet died too. She okay. was <laughs> sorry. Were they my cousins? Okay, yeah, let's yeah. just get it out there. All right. Okay. okay. Pretty convinced Janet. that you and I have been family for a long time, and just nobody's ever said anything. You okay, know. Okay. Janet died. So Janet passed away. She did, and Joanne's still alive. But Janet was a little older than Joanne. But yet the three of us kind of were. We could find Thanksgiving things to do. Like, I mean, yes. it would, they, they included me and it wasn't, you know. Pinochle. It, right. Yes. Pinochle. Exactly. <laughs> bridge. We're going to play bridge. Yeah. Um, so, but, but like I was saying, so the, because I, now I have another theory on this whole, the 21, get them a drink thing. And, and I hear me out on this. So I okay. was raised in a family where I was not heavily exposed to drinking. Like that was the thing you were looking forward to. Me neither. However, I did also tell you legally, I found the loophole growing up in Buffalo where right. I was able to go to Canada and, you know, partake before I was 21. Right. I'm 900% sure my parents knew. And again, I wasn't breaking any laws. I wasn't breaking any rules and I never came home, you know, insane. Blotted. No. So I think they kind of looked at it like, we don't need to do that. That's not like a big thing in our life. So it brings me to this. Are we just in a society now yes. where we've accepted that probably, probably most almost 21 year olds have already had their first drink yes Most. yes but i also think that for a while it became an event it was something yeah. that during uh your generation bleeding into mine it wasn't celebrated as much it wasn't like oh we have to take them out for a drink it wasn't until like it was almost like that gener- a little bit younger than me, so I'm 40. So, um, as you all know, because I've been celebrating for the past year, um, but <laughs> that it wasn't like a little bit... Uh, do we bit- keep going till the 41st and then you shut up? Yes, yes. Okay. All right. And then, <laughs> now we're about two months away. Um, so I know, we've almost but- started the countdown for the next birthday, and yes. here we are still celebrating the last one. But it, it, it was then that it became an event. But I think that's turning, though, because... I I was just in D.C. and there's a lot of places that offer mocktails. And even around here, we have yeah. a couple of places that offer mocktails that drinking, you know, drinking is great. It's fine, whatever. But it's also not something that we always have to celebrate. Can I tell you the most obvious thing that I can't believe I just why this hasn't come out first? What? I have a 22 year old daughter. Oh, yeah. And uh, when she was 21. She really doesn't, she doesn't have an interest in it. She really does not like alcohol. Good for her. I so, mean, does anybody really like the taste when it first comes to their lips? Well. No. I remember the first time I even- I could name some. Well, I, I remember smelling beer for the first time and I was like, oh, this well, is- Oh, beer's ter- different. I'm talking like if you're doing, a, well, a highball, if you're doing a whiskey and ginger or something well, like that. Well, whiskey and ginger is not what I'm doing when I'm trying it for the first time at the age of 17, 18, 19 years old. No, but hear me out on this. Would that first drink now- be different than going out for your first beer. Now would it be, if you're going to do it, you're going to go out and do a nicer drink than just, hey, let's get you your first Miller Lite. Well, I can tell you, uh, I don't know. Because, I, you know, they're still like when you're 20-some years old. I guess I would have to talk to a 20-some years old person. Because when you're 20-some years old, shots is the thing. Just the other day when I was at my 40th birthday celebration with my girlfriends, um, <laughs> that we had something. Have you ever heard of Little Beers? Mm-mm. Little Beers is, it's a little tiny, uh, oh, it's called like Liquor 43 or something. Okay. You put that in the shot glass and you froth 
Oh, God. It's heavy whipping cream, and I think you froth it in. And it looks like a little beer, but it's actually liquor. Huh. So it's got a little head on it. And you take the shot like that. That's about as all, that's all I can do. Now, my 20s doing shots was... Uh, I can't do shots. Yeah, no, me neither. I've never been a even, shot person. Now, I don't like it. No, even now, like somebody is like, oh, do you want to... Everybody, everybody is doing a shot at whatever we're celebrating. Yep. Uh, I can't tell you how many times, and I've gotten good at diverting doing the shot. Oh, I don't and, divert it. I just say, no, yeah. I don't do shots. I, and I, I make that face. So I'm like, no, it's not my thing. Gross. No. Get it away from me. I don't need to get messed up that quick. Really, I don't need to get messed up at all, let alone that quick. Exactly. Exactly. But my other point to this is you were saying like your daughter who is 22 now and not into drinking. Mm. And I'm not saying this is your daughter at all. I'm just saying as a generational thing, they're into smoking. You know, they're into like sm- uh, smoking weed. And yes, but she lives in Ohio, not legal there like the sticker stores in New York. So I'm not worried about it. <laughs> no, no, but I th- I am just saying a generational thing. I think more of them smoke than drink anyway. But you're specifically saying smoking weed. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that that, so there's really not, not like a, it's a resurgence of camels. <laughs> right. So I don't think that there is a celebration of smoking weed and maybe there is maybe a lot of times you celebrate smoking weed it's pretty laid back right right you're not going out for i wonder how bars are doing are they suffering or is it because they're they're charging more because we were in dc now i uh i respectfully don't drink in front of my parents they and there's reasons for that number one uh they don't drink for their religious reasons now you know i love the jc but i also love having a cocktail you also love the jim beam yeah yeah (laughs) JC and the JB. But I also, but my mom also grew up in a really alcoholic family, oh. and and it, you know, and it came with some unfortunate abuse that that was tied to it. So my mom has a very negative outlook on alcohol, rightfully so. Sure. But I know that after we left my brother's wedding this past weekend, that we went back to the hotel, we stopped at the bar, we got a drink, mm-hmm. a drink, and it cost us. For one drink for the both of us with tip about fifty bucks. So I well, think Well, part of that was DC too. Now you gotta remember DC is one of the most expensive cities mm-hmm. anywhere. Mm-hmm. But you know but the I politicians how, the politicians can afford it because we're paying them. But I think that's how they make their money too. Go to a concert. You go to a concert, you're paying yeah. a lot more for alcohol. Well, I think they have to make up for the money lost because people aren't drinking as much and they're smoking more. We read something and this was something for the show, and this was as the Gen uh, Gen Zers were becoming of age to drink. Mm-hmm. They don't drink as much. At least the majority of the people right. that were surveyed, they they it's not it's not as big as it once was. Right. Uh, I'm not saying they don't drink at all, but it's it's not what it used to be. Full circle. Back to my original question: When Jason, the intern, turns 21, do you think you guys will be work happy hour buddies? No. No, I don't. Because well, also, it's a little difficult doing a morning show because we're in at five something in the morning. We get out at two in the afternoon. That's still early for me to have one. Oh, yeah. But I, I think it's so funny because some of my closest radio friends were 40, 50 years old. Yeah. And we were going to have, we would do a happy hour usually on Fridays and we would all get together and I would talk about, you know, life. Yeah. With these 40 and 50 year olds. So I was wondering if you would ever find yourself relating to Jason having the young work friend. You know something? Like all of a sudden you become best friends. You know what's funny? Hmm. I relate to Jason better than I relate to my 22 year old daughter. Why do you think that is? I don't know. Maybe Maybe because like you guys have a very specific like father daughter relationship. Jason and I? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> where you guys can veer more in, well i maybe it's a gender thing too i don't know well no i mean my daughter and i i mean okay here's what'll ha- here's what i will tell you so i gave her the nerd gene love and, that yep she loves uh the, she loves the different star trek shows that you know the newer stuff that's been coming out and historically knows some of the other stuff so i gave her the nerd gene um she also took that a, a, a step further she was always big into the anime and things mm-hmm. like that and and that sort of art i did not understand that i still don't get it you know um yeah but, but i love that for her and i think that keeps her out of trouble oh, I think there's something about completely. that community yeah that that's where you end up finding some really great lifelong friends and it's where you can you get to 
be yourself. Do you know? And that is what I appreciate about Megan is she is herself, you know, unapologetically. It's, it's something really, you know, she is. And I never, ever have to worry about her making bad joy. I will not get the phone call from my daughter that I'm going to be a grandfather. I may not get a phone call from 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 Megan saying that she's uh, going to make me a grandfather. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I mean, maybe she'll find that one day in her life, but I know up until... I mean, it, that's it's okay. Just, My parents won't get that call either. Yeah, well, but I'm <laughs> different podcast down the road. We'll share that. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, she still hasn't figured that one out yet, has she? No. Okay. No. 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 Moving on. Moving yeah. on, as Terry would say. Um, <laughs> so uh, I don't worry about that with Megan. Can I also tell you? I watch and 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 I know we have to get to one other story in this podcast before we wrap up today, but we've really gotten into some interesting stuff today with this. But remember, we're going to come back to the milkshake in a minute. Yeah. So um, the thing is, I'm beginning to wonder if I'm going to have to worry about any of my children and getting into, well, frankly... I don't want them to be, I was not wild, but I had wild spells Mm -hmm. and looking back on it, you know, like I look at, I look at Gavin and I think to myself, if he follows on this path, I don't think I'm going to have to worry about him, you know, getting into too much trouble. I might, I might have to keep an eye on a couple little things, but I don't see that happening. And then I think of Lydia Mm -hmm. and I'm like, She's very boss, but she's not one of these girls that wants to be older than she is right now. She wants to be a bit in command. She could be getting that from any parent, but uh, but she wants to be a bit in command. But again, I don't see her trying to be seven at four. Does that make sense? I worry about the yes. kids. Specifically, I worry about the girls that of are... Of course you do, because you know the phrase, right? Which one? The phrase that says, when you have a son, you only have to worry about one dick. When you have daughters, you have to worry about all of them. That's true. <laughs> um, but uh, but I, I look at it, that's funny. I look at it like uh, like this. I worry about girls that are, let's say, 10 and want to be 16 already. Or, yeah. you know, they're eight or nine and they're way above. It's like... I know some kids just mentally mature quicker or really want to experiment more in that. But I worry about that. Like, that would be an interesting thing. Like, did you have a daughter that at, let's say, 10 years old, really wanted to be that 16 year old, you know, and was dressing that way? And and, and, and believe me, I know I'm, I'm not. Look, I'm not naive. I'm not a prude. Can't keep her young forever, but but you can for a while. And I'm wondering, like, I, I don't know why it is that I that so far and I'm hoping it continues, that I've raised the kids, they are not rushing to get older. I I do love I'm that. rushing to get and them I, the fuck out of my house. No, I'm kidding. I'm and kidding. I love that she is a little bossy, and here's why. That means that she is the leader. Oh, she'll and, be in command. There's, no, this there's is, no doubt. This is what I love. I think that I also carry a lot of leadership um, characteristics because what that means is if there is somebody who's drinking or getting into drugs or, you know, burglarizing or whatever that they're not going to be following that 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 you what you what hopefully that she can remind herself of is i can be the leader and i can be living out loud and i can do it my own way and that doesn't mean and especially if she's a boss and she wants to still be the boss later on then she knows that she's got to stay on the, the straight and narrow for much of her life to be the boss you don't hear of that many people except for that mcafee guy that i watched the documentary on (laughs) um being a boss and they're like a severe drug addict like do you think mark zuckerberg uh is a severe drug addict No, no 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 do you think warren buffett no i think that that that's what happens the things with like mcafee and those people uh epstein is another great one yeah is that yes they are uh Unfortunately, Wait, Jeffrey Epstein, you're about to bring him into the group. I think yes. he was he. No, I think he was addicted to st- whether it was alcohol or drugs There's something there. Yes, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying. But what ends up happening to those people? They end up the corruption comes to mm-hmm. the surface and their their um, their kingdom falls. And so that's what I think. As long as she can understand, like you can it's still have fun. Like I'm a I take the lead and I have fun. Sure. But I also, it was funny because one of our coworkers, he goes, I think you lead a pretty vanilla life when you go home. I do. Oh, I heard that mentioned today. And, and you know, I, but okay, so so do I. Yep. A lot of people don't realize when we're not doing something, this is strictly for me. I know you're, you're, you're much more social than I am. And it's not that I don't like people, but I also- But he doesn't like people. Well, I was kidding. Some of you. you know. <laughs> no, but the thing about it is, is I- 
Um, I'm not, I, I, I'm not a recluse or or a you know shut in. I don't do that. But um, we're on a lot. And when I say right. we're on, I'm not saying we're on air a lot or on a podcast or on uh, on demand. Which iHeart, Odyssey, all the different places. Check out the Scott and Alley on demand, or of course this the uh, podcast. And if you're on YouTube or Spotify, like, share, and and uh, and hit that su- subscribe button so we know. Um, the thing about it is. I when we're on when we do events and there are times we're very busy Mm -hmm. I want off that like I like doing that you can put me in front of 80,000 people I will go open the Bills game and I have no fear to walk out to the center field of the 50 yard line with a microphone and get that crowd going and I have no fear of it you've seen it you've seen it put me in a room with five people I'm more uncomfortable I like to be away from that. Like, I don't want to always be on. Now, there was a time where I was constantly on and I realized I don't want to always be on. Yeah, I actually just told this to uh, when we just bought this house and I know the owner. And so I was asking her about the neighbors and she was like, oh, these people are very nice. You know, this. Blah, blah, blah. And I said, to be honest with you, I want to know my neighbors to a certain degree. Yeah. But I don't want to go home and be neighborly all the time. I want to go home and shut off. And yes. so I am getting to that point in my life because you're right. I have been on, I've been in this job for 17 years and I have been way too on way too much. Yeah. And listen, I love my neighbors and I love when I spend time with them. Yeah. Um, but we don't do it every day. That would, that would wear, you know right, I mean? Right. Now I have to, before we go real quick to the milkshake story, because you were at your brother's wedding this past weekend. Yes. I did want to come back one thing for a second with my kids because I've already started to see the path. Now, my oldest, 22, will go that direction, okay? She is the snarky, I'm not going to take shit from you, and I will have a comeback for you, and I have a way to put you in your place, and oh, you'll know it. And Where it's does she get funny. that from? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but it's pretty funny because... She can, uh, she can very easily, you know, but, but she's not, she's not a mean person. If you, if that makes sense, there's right. no, there's not a mean body in her. She works for a pet store on the side oh. of, uh, doing her college stuff. So big love of animals, all that stuff, but she can be pretty funny and she can be pretty, well, let's put it this way. If you have the Scott and Allie sense of humor, you're going to get a laugh out of it. You I, know, I like the word moxie. She can be pretty sure. moxie, you know, that brazen spirit. Now, oddly, would you believe Gavin's going to be my worrier? He's going to be the one. I've had to tell him a couple times, dude, don't even think about it. It's fine. Not that you, Don't expend the energy on it. Yes. I, I'm going to see him, not where it's going to cripple him with, with uh, being the warrior, but I do see he is going to be the more sensitive one when it comes to, do we need to do something with this situation or do I need to be concerned about it? And then I'll go right to Lydia and I'll tell you, she's going to give all the orders. It's going to come. I mean, by the time she's old enough, she will be giving all the orders in the house on who does what and when and how it happens. And, you know, by that point, I'll be ready for that. <laughs> I'm very interested about how Gavin is going to turn out in a few years because my significant other is the worrier. Uh-huh. And <laughs> even this weekend, actually, the process of buying a house and then traveling to D.C. this weekend, I was like, your stress is stressing me out. I can't take it. Like, I don't stress about stuff. And I even said to him, you know, everything in the, the house buying process has been easy. What are you uh, worrying? It's still a what lot, are you though. worrying about? And he's like, but I just think, well, then it could turn. I'm like, yes, I guess it could. But you know what? We're, we'll get to it when we get to it. You're worrying about something that is not even in existence. So I worry about Gavin worrying so much because well, it's not constant, but he's the one that I've seen a couple times make comments about things. And I'm like, you don't need to worry about it, dude. It's okay. Or I'll explain to him why he doesn't need to be as concerned with oh. it. You know, like things do work out. Now, I'm certainly not as loosey-goosey as you when it comes to, oh, everything's fine. I would like to say that I wish you and Zach were slightly more in the middle because right. you're way over here. Yep. Way over. Well, you can't see me on the camera. She's going that way. Yep. And it's like, you know, there's nothing to worry about. It's just flames shooting out of the ceiling. Don't well, think about it. Did I tell you about the fight that we got into the other day when it came to, I had to get the cabinets painted by the time our contractor was coming in from out of town. Well, that makes sense. There probably is a plan. And I was trying to paint them. And, and I was, I, after work, I was working on the house. And he was like, but it's got to get done. And blah, blah, blah. I said, it's going to get done. He goes, well, you're just too lackadaisical about this. I said, no, I'm not. I, I, 
And did, did we talk about this? I don't think so. Oh, okay. But I said, I'm enjoying every second of I it. I said, oh my gosh, you are like Scott Free. You are driving me crazy because you can't get away from Scott us. Scott is a five alarm fire when things are happening. When, and other people, you've even said this to me. You're like, you know, but this and this and this. And I'm like, okay. I, Somebody's got to be thinking the 10 steps ahead. I am, but I'm just not living it out loud. I'm thinking it. It's inside. I am okay. Yes. I got to get the cabinets painted. I'm going to do that. And I, the timeline's up here. I, I'm not freaking out about it. Were you and him? <gasps> well, I'm like, Shut I, up! I'm Just doing, shut I'm up! I'm doing myself work to prevent that, to to uh, try to slow that a little bit. But you do have to. Well, it's going to be tough. You guys are going to deal with this for the for the entirety of your relationship. Life. Uh, yes, yes, your life. You're just going to have to deal with it. So maybe the answer is a few things. If if I if I put on my counselor hat now, get worked up about. Okay. No, no, don't do that. <laughs> but maybe he's concerned because he doesn't see you moving at the pace that he wishes that you were. Like if you were supposed to be painting the cabinets, mm-hmm. but your phone was. You were doing one of these. You know, and, you know, and and he's like, can you pick the paintbrush up at least? The funny thing is, I, he wasn't even there the entire time that did I was. Did he call you and say, are they done? Oh, yeah, of course he did. <laughs> I was like, well, no, because, you know, I, we needed to put another coat on or or whatever the case may be. And it, it's like, listen, I can only do what I can do with paint. It's got to dry. So was he upset you didn't start a day before? Well, what ended up happening was I had to take a half day just to finish the cabinets, which I didn't want to do, but I had to. She wanted because, to be with me longer. Yes, <laughs> that's exactly it. But I also want to bring this full circle back to, uh, oh, I had something that I was going to bring up about the whole Gavin thing. Shoot, what was it? Oh, oh, yes, 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 yes. I remember. So my cousin and I were talking about this at a family reunion, and this is something where we grew up kind of similar but not entirely. So that's why we were like comparing notes. So he was saying in his marriage, he also gets blamed for being too lackadaisical Mm -hmm. about certain things or or giving the air of not caring. And it's like, no, it's not that I don't care. I just am very reserved in those feelings. And so I was like, oh my God, me too. And then I said, when it comes to raising your kids, how would you do things differently? Now you're talking about the worrying and things like that. He's like, you know, when we grew up, we almost couldn't show our feelings or show our emotions. Oh, that was a generational thing at the time, yeah. Right, right. So he goes, now, and this is what, something I think that you can apply with Gavin, too, and, and all your kids. But, you know, when Gavin says things like that, it's not just like, not, it's not necessarily don't worry about it, but it's like, well, why do you feel that way? So he goes, now I ask my kids the why all the time. Why are you worried? Why are you sad? Why are you crying? Why are you mad? Now, I will tell you this. Oh, you know, it's funny. I inadvertently did that when I said, well, why are you worrying about it? You know, right. I, but get the answer. Find oh, out sure. the root. Because, you know, and this is a little bit of me telling you something that my therapist told me. So when um, when you think of it like water, you got the ripples up at the top, mm-hmm. right? Like that's like, that's me crying or being me, me being mad and like slamming a cupboard door or whatever the case may be. Now, what causes these ripples is the rocks down below. So what is the, what is the, what's the rock down below when it comes to Gavin or Lydia or Megan or you or whatever. So I think that that is trying to figure that out because your kid does get to have emotions. They get to, to feel that way. And finding that out, I think is really important. You know, it's funny too. And and I agree with that hundred percent. I mean, I want the uh, kids to be able to express their emotions. Now, I will say, in my case, all of my kids uh, are pretty resilient, and I feel, you know, pretty grounded in in their emotional uh, health at this point. Now, mind you, one's four, one's nine, so right. it's early on, but um, but it's also, good to start. That's a healthy habit. But the other thing too is is um, I have a pretty calm house. You know, I mean, it sounds really weird because, yes, I, Ellie has seen me get worked up over certain situations. Uh, we've worked together for <laughs> 17 years, you know, but I don't know. I'm going through this point now where I, you know, I'm never going to be quite as easy on it like you are, where it's like, it's okay. You know, this, that, because <laughs> everything's well, fine. You would think that I smoke weed, but I don't. No, as much but, as I'm know, like, it's okay. You're going to, I'm going to say this though. You're going to have to balance between you. You know, the way Zach is, mm-hmm. you know, the way you are, 
you two are going to have to find a balance to make that that be, be, you may have to bring it up a bit the urgency did you, you see may my have face? to well, yes i did I was like, Ugh. yeah you may have to bring the the urgency up a bit just to make sure he knows i'm not saying ratchet it to 10 if he's at a 10 but you might need to take it to a three from a one you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. just to kind of be like i i'm doing it now as far as like you going off at work or things like that you were saying how you have a calm house though the the times that scott does have that reaction you have to understand that a lot of our job is based on timing of things and time and and also other people doing their job so it is frustrating and i i agree with this part when we're on this path doing our job yeah. but you got somebody that you're it's like riding a bike one pedal is going like this well mm-hmm. how does that bike go forward with only one pedal it's going slow it's tough it's, it's tough to ride that bike you need both pedals that are working in tandem. Yeah, and and I've had normally my moments come from either the other pe- pedal, the other pedal, yes, yeah. or and I'm always very concerned about this. We are in a business of attempting to please the public. In many times, mm-hmm. I refuse to look like an ass when I can control it. I mean, I always look like an ass. I mean, geez, you know that's that's my life. But no, I get it. Your name's on this. Say, for instance, we're giving something away, mm-hmm. and it's a big prize. When something goes wrong, it bothers me because, you know, it, it, I want the people to have the right experience and not have to have difficulties. And yes. that really, really gets to me in a bad way when the pedals are not doing what they have to do. I mean, uh, that's priding your work. Other than what, other than that, I don't have any reasons to get upset. I just right. don't. I, right. There's not, nothing here. You know, I've had my moments of frustration when you look around and you're like, I wish somebody would do something with this. And you're like, but I have to remember, I'm thinking about it in my timeline. I'm Mm -hmm. not looking at it as though, is it already on their radar and they're getting to it? It's when nothing's ever done. And I know that it's a flaw and the flaw will expand to a fissure and we will all fall in at one point. That scares me. Feels like the broken chain on the bike. You know, you get a lot of bike analogies. I know. I don't know what's the bike thing for today. Right. All right. We've got Mm -hmm. minutes left, but I want to hear this milkshake thing because this deals with your brother's wedding. Uh, Yeah. I also was thinking, oh, my gosh, my grandmother had it right X amount of years ago. So my grandparents got married. We did the math. My grandparents got married in 1949. Mm. Shoo. Uh, you and know they those, were young, weren't they? They were 17 years old. They were still in high school. Wow. And you know that song? How very 1949. All right? All right? Uh, you know that song, My Milkshake Brings All the Boys to the Yard? They danced to that for their first dance? Yeah. <laughs> yeah no. Which back was then like, was probably big band. I was like, <laughs> my grandmother's got my this right. My milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. No, what? what happened was on their wedding day, they had no money. All they could afford was a milkshake. So they Aww. went, I know, on their wedding day. After their wedding, they, which I think was uh, like a JOP situation, they went and got a milkshake. So they, all they could afford was one milkshake and two straws. So oh. to this day, every single person in my family, all my aunts and uncles, all of my cousins on their wedding day, they go usually to McDonald's, but McDonald's wasn't around in 1949. Um, they usually will go to McDonald's and they will go get a milkshake and two straws. It is the family oh, tradition. That is so cute. My brother did it this past weekend for his wedding. I know he actually, this is the second time doing it, but anyway, so <laughs> maybe he shouldn't tell his new wife. This is the second time I've done that. Right. But it, what the funny part was is that, no, we're not sharing any traditions, nothing. They, they were in downtown DC and my dad was like, yeah, we're parked illegally. And so, <laughs> so my dad's like, hurry, go get the milkshake. Go get the and milkshake. And we see how Mark is, just like me yeah. and Zach. And so, so they're like rushing to get the milkshake and get the pictures and do everything. <laughs> while my dad's like, I'm going to get a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be running to the car with your dad. Come on, Mark. Yeah. We got to get out of here. Exactly. Oh my I'll gosh. share a shake with you on the way. So my mom stayed in the car. I was like, <laughs> what? You stayed in the car? Like you have to be there for the tradition. And my mom's like, but we were parked illegally. So somebody had to stay in the car. Oh my now, God. Um, your mother's the warrior. The, yeah. I, I honestly, I. And she broke the tradition or did your dad bring out the milkshake? Uh, well, they went to McDonald's. And my dad was there taking the pictures along with a photographer. But so, did they do the milkshake? My mom and dad didn't. And that kind of like broke my little heart. 
Yes. So they this, were, they've done this before. How this goes is uh, when my grandparents were alive, my grandparents would go to the the uh, the place with the new bride and groom. So it, say it was my cousin Micah and his wife Michelle. Mm-hmm. So Micah and Michelle went to McDonald's. My grandparents went to McDonald's and everybody shared a milkshake. This is actually almost upsetting to me now that I'm thinking about how. This- I know it's upsetting to me because I think Mark's going to call me and ask if he has a ro- if I have a room he can stay in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm getting nervous. I'm going to tell him just bring all the action figures. But sure. Well, and then so if it was if it was um, so my grandparents are not alive anymore. So then the mom and the dad, you know, my mom and dad, or or you know, mm-hmm. if it was Micah's mom and dad would go and share the milkshake. So my mom didn't share the milkshake with my dad, <sighs> along with my brother and Nicole, his new wife, and that. I, this is honestly the first time this is coming out of my mouth. So now I'm like getting upset about it. Like, yeah, I'm wait, thinking you, about this too. Going, why at least did Mark not bring a milkshake to the car to keep the tradition going between your mom and dad? Right. I, that, right that's exactly right. Like my brother and his new wife. That's great that they did it, and that really is what is supposed to happen. But Gail didn't go in. Like, well, ugh. I understand the freakout factor. What concerns me more, if this is the tradition, yeah. why didn't he bring a shake with two straws out? They could have done it. They've done it in the past. That's true. That's true. They could have went. You're right. They could have had the milkshake. Oh, wait, is your cup. mother lactose intolerant now, too, along with the gluten? Oh, don't even get me started. Oh, now see, she's, now she's, not, she's not even eating sugar now. So are you going to do this at, you know, the... Uh, uh, eventual non-wedding we're expecting yes oh absolutely and it was the running joke over the weekend there was a couple running jokes the first one was that my brother said to zach you guys just need to elope i said you shut your mouth right now we're gonna have a wedding and he's like no even that they only had a 50 person wedding he goes even a 50 person wedding is too much stress just elope and zach's like see see let's just elope i'm like Vegas, sh- baby. yeah I'm like shut up <laughs> So that was the first thing. The second thing is, the the joke has been how many people are going to be at our non-wedding, yes. Scott. And I said, 50. Zach says, 20. And I said, we got to meet in the middle somewhere. What are you, 35. What are you stressed about? What hey, you- look, at, look at the bright side. Um, you don't have to worry about and guest with me. It's just me. Well, that's I'm saving f- you numbers here. That That's fine. That's great. Because honestly... Oh my God! I have the list of of people who are going to be at the wedding, and most people are Where not on that list. Am I? Well, you're on my side. Zach's got yeah, his side. Yeah, I want to know the number. Oh, you're. Just, I mean, there's no there's no order to Bullshit. it. Bullshit! We count from one down, and I want to know where uh, I am. The, the, okay, the, the, hold, the, on. The, the, hold on. By the way, I want to be in your milkshake picture. No. Oh come on! I love a milkshake. No chocolate. It is for it is for the bride and groom, so and then the mom and dad. One picture. No, there's come two. On. There's two instances. You have to be quiet during my wedding. The first what one, am I going to say at your wedding? You are going to say something while I'm going down the aisle. Where to go? No, like, no, I'm not going to do that. But you know what? If, if we're like, finally, if there's <laughs> <laughs> that would be you. No, shut up. You know what's going to happen? What at the part of the wedding they go? Anyone that oh, how does it go? Speak now or forever hold your peace. Anyone that uh, uh, it opposes this wedding or or has concern, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait because it'll be quiet for a minute. I'm yes. gonna go. <laughs> I'll kill you. I know you will. I will I kill you. She'll take your wedding shoe off and throw it at me, and I'm going to be oh. like, ha, 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 ha. Oh, Now I'm in your Let's milkshake see. picture, bitch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, you were number 10. Now you're number zero. So, oh, excuse uh, <laughs> I just. Wow. Uh, how, many, how many more people are on that list from you? Uh, so, I was number 10. I need to know. If I'm in the middle, I can take it. Well, so I'll, here's the list as it stands right now Mark and Gail, of course, mom and dad, right? Yes. Sonia, because she's oh, yeah. going to do my hair. Yeah. Sarah. Yeah. But see, I didn't put Sonia's significant other, because at this point, I was like trying to get under 20, which is super difficult. Well, okay. Uh, Sarah. Let them all figure out something to do with themselves. Timmy and Lauren. Well, yeah. Is Timmy, Did, you've known Timmy since you were, what, in high school? Yeah. Yeah. He's my best friend. Yeah. Uh, then we have Disaster and Tanya. Danielle, she's doing the photos. Then there okay. was Then there was Scott. Oh, okay. So I was under the official job titled people or your very closest friends right, right. or family, and then right. I fall in. Okay. Right, right. If I go below that mark, you're dead. 
I'll be in every no, we, milkshake. We got to find you a job. Ring bearer. Ring bearer. <laughs> How about I do the announcements? You guys are the only people that I cannot fuck up the naming. Let me tell you, because I used to DJ weddings and uh-huh. it was hell on earth. Oh, wait, I forgot Matt and Donna, because I think Matt's going to officiate. Anyway, keep Oh, well, going. that makes sense. Yes. Okay. So, right, right. So I used, when I used to, and, and if you ask any wedding DJ this, if you screw up a name and not every name is easy. Mm-hmm. You are immediately hated for the rest of the night. Oh, like it yeah. doesn't matter what it is. Well, I can't mess up the houseworths or the pains. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yes, House of Pain. Yes. Oh my God. And House got, of Pain. We got a housewarming gift. You did? From my friend Lauren. Yes. So Lauren makes actually she made this too. So she makes like these, like, you know, the the um uh what are they? The the Oh, travel that's what mugs. you've been sipping vodka out of all morning. <laughs> Wait, yeah. I gotta read you this and then I'll tell you about the housewarming gift. So she made me this cup that says High heels and red lipstick will put the fear of God in people. I guess it's a famous quote from somebody. I don't know who. You own it. Uh, own yes, it. yes. But she made us a doormat that says House of Pain. You know, Zach's going to be happy about that. House of Pain? The, 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 he's going to be happy that you now have that doormat and he's not the only one. Oh. Uh. <laughs> There's that Bye, one. Bye, y'all. <laughs>